Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Robert Gunther. I'm the Senior Vice President for United Fresh. We are excited to host this webinar with USDA to talk about the Buy Fresh Purchase Program that is scheduled to be launched in the next couple of weeks. So before we get started, I wanted to lay out some of the logistics for today's webinar. First, this webinar is being recorded and we will have that recording available on our website as soon as possible. With such an enthusiastic response from the industry to this webinar, we will be using the Q&A function to ask questions. We are hopeful that we, we will have time at the end of this, the, the presentation to address as many questions as we can fit in in the next hour. So as part of this as well, all attendees will be muted and remain muted during the, during the webinar, during the duration of the webinar. And then finally, the content of this webinar is not intended for the media. If the media is on the call, we are happy to connect with you separately to approve quote, quotes after the call. So now that the logistics are out of the way, let me say a few things before I turn it over to Tom. So United Fresh in the produce industry is very pleased that this program is being offered by the Department of Agriculture. There could not be a more important time for the industry to work with the federal government and help those most in need. Just in the last 24 hours, we have seen over a thousand bags of produce distributed at a local food bank in coastal Georgia, which included product from a number of United Fresh members and then just this morning, United Fresh teamed up with a local Washington DC distributor, Keeney Produce, to hand out 200 boxes of produce during a shift change at George Washington University. So seeing the enthusiasm of so many of, of you who are on the webinar today, we feel confident that the industry is ready to take this on and make it a successful venture with our partners at USDA. With that, it is now my pleasure to introduce Tom Bergato, President of Pacific Coast Fruit Company and Chairman of United Fresh's Webinar or Wholesale and Distributor Board. Tom? Thank you, Robert, and good morning. Since day one of the COVID crisis, United Fresh has been working closely with the produce food service distribution sector to help us find solutions for our business. A big part of it has been working closely with government officials, including the USDA, to look at innovative programs for the fresh produce supply chain. We were so pleased to see an outcome of these conversations come to life this week with the announcement of the new Buy Fresh program, which includes the $100 million a month for approximately six months to address the dropout, dropout of the food service distribution sector, and more specifically, the prepacked consumer ready boxes made available to food banks and other nonprofit sites. We thank AMS staff for taking the time today to provide additional um, background on the fresh produce component of this program. We also thank them for their work thus far. With the busy few weeks ahead of them getting the program off the, off the ground, we are grateful for their service. Joining us today um, from the USDA and AMS, AMS are David Tuckwiller and Hillary Cole. Now I'd like to turn it over to David and Hillary from the USDA. Thank you very much. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate it. Um, so uh, for those who uh, did participate in our webinar on uh, Tuesday, I just would like to say uh, our plan was to have that uh, uploaded to our website uh, you know, shortly thereafter. Unfortunately, <laughs> some technical difficulties uh, created an issue where we haven't been able to get that from uh, the company that had the uh, video so uh so we're working on that and hopefully we'll, we'll get that one up where you you know we'll have a, a lot of the details that we talked about tuesday um but uh, as as tom said uh, i'm dave tuckwiller i'm deputy administrator for uh, ams commodity procurement and hillary cole is here today with me she is our contracting officer she actually works in our livestock uh poultry and fish branch but uh she's been uh kind enough to uh, take this project on and so we moved her out of there and she's learning all about fresh produce as well now. Um, so uh, so glad to have her here with me as well. Uh, really appreciate the interest uh, that we've had. We started a, a few conversations back uh, probably three weeks ago. Uh, we started with uh, United Fresh and, uh, and, and had a few conversations, threw out some kind of crazy ideas of how we might be able to, uh, to, to make a distribution program work. And, uh, you know, folks uh, enjoyed our, our idea so much that, uh, you know, they threw dairy and, and the meat into it too that we weren't really expecting. But, uh, uh, you know, we really appreciate the, the feedback and the, uh, you know, the, the conversations that we had. 
uh, with the folks at United Fresh uh, that really helped us develop really what, what became this program. So, so definitely appreciate that. Um, for, for those of you who don't know what our organization does, uh, we do purchase uh, fruits, vegetables, um, you know, uh, meat, poultry, fish, uh, grains, dairy, seed, dairy, oil seed products, all kinds of different products for uh, food banks, for schools, uh, for Indian tribal organizations uh, across the country. Our, our goal is to support American agriculture, so everything we purchase is 100% domestic. Uh, but we're also here to support uh, those in need and, and those who need food. We also purchase uh, a lot of grains and, and other products for international distribution too. So if you see uh, the pictures of uh, bags of grain with USAID on those, uh, our organization uh, purchases those as well. Just to give you a little bit of perspective that, um, you know, we, we, we do know how to buy food. Um, so, uh, so, so that is uh, what we do on a regular basis. Uh, however, uh, we don't know how to buy food this way. Uh, this is uh, something completely new to us and uh, we're really excited to try something different uh, to try to provide the support that's needed during this time. Um, and, and uh, you know, not just to fresh fruits and, and vegetables, but, uh, but to uh, other, other areas as well. Um, just to kind of, you know, just to, to kick it off for those that weren't on the webinar, um, we're not going to go through all of the contractual things, uh, you know, in detail. Uh, we want to really get to the question and answers, but just to give you kind of uh, what our vision is uh, for this program, I, I thought I'd give you a high level. Uh, this is going to be a contract. Uh, it's a federal contract with, with entities who can provide, and, and we'll just talk fresh produce, boxes of fresh produce uh, to uh, nonprofit organizations. And, and actually, I, I don't think I mentioned this on the call the other day, but schools are part of this as well. Um, if, if you can partner with schools, that is also a, another uh, uh, entity that can uh, take food through this program. So, so it does open it up quite a bit. Um, the program uh, really, uh, like I say, it's, it's going to be a federal contract, so there are rules and regulations uh, that, that we do have to follow um, and that anyone who does business with us has to follow. But our goal is one of the things we, we constantly are getting the question, do I have to be approved beforehand? And the answer to that is no. Um, we are doing some uh, streamlined uh, processes. Uh, this was actually something that United Fresh asked us to, uh, to take a look at if we could streamline our approval process. And, and so with this program, we are able to do that. Uh, so part of the offer that comes in in response to our solicitation, uh, we will determine what we call responsibility or approval of vendors. And so, uh, so that has been streamlined all into that one process and not, that it is not necessary to become, uh, to become a, 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 an approved vendor beforehand. Um, what we're asking is uh, entities that, that can submit a bid um, and you know, we're, we're, we're looking at you know, produce distributors specifically, but really enti any entity that can bring in produce, put multiple products in a box, and deliver that to, uh, to a nonprofit or school or, or some organization that's giving out food to, to people who need it right now. Um, that's what we're looking for from, from, a, from an offer standpoint. Uh, we would like to know, um, you know who you're, you're supporting, um, you know, who you're going to distribute this food to. It doesn't need to be the specific location because you, know, you could uh, provide food to the uh, you know, X food bank but they may have locations in a, in, a, in a regional area that maybe you could drop off boxes in, in each of those areas. So, so, but we are looking for information like that so that we know who you're, you're participating with because we wanna make sure we have coverage as much as possible across the country for this program. Um, but, uh, but we will pay for the produce, we will pay for whatever it takes to put the produce uh, in the boxes, and we will pay for whatever distribution costs uh, are incurred to, uh, to, to do the multiple drop-offs or one drop-off at a location, whatever is worked out with those nonprofits. Um, we don't have a list of all the nonprofits in, in the country. So, uh, you know, while we have a list of what we normally provide to food banks who participate in, uh, in a program called the Emergency Food Assistance Program, uh, we will provide that. We do want to hit all those, but this program opens it up to to a lot of other nonprofits and, and as I said, schools. 
So we really want that relationship to be built by the distributors, uh, by the entities that are gonna submit an offer and those nonprofits and schools. So, uh, so we're not dictating where those uh, destinations need to be. That needs to be part of the offer. So, so we're really hopeful that, uh, that you already are working on some of those uh, relationships with the nonprofits. And we're excited because uh, we've had some conversation with, like, with Meals on Wheels. Um, we've heard that maybe the Ronald McDonald House could take some. I mean, this is exciting to us just to see how, how far this program can reach. Um, so I get a little excited, so if I start jumping up and down and you start seeing just the top or bottom of my head, that's, uh, yeah, it's because I'm excited. Um, but, uh, but we will receive offers and then we will evaluate those offers again, trying to, to, uh, to get as much coverage across the country as possible. Um, the goal is, I think, you know, a hundred million dollars per month. Uh, that is what we're shooting for. Um, you know, lots of questions about, well, if you get more bids than that hundred million dollars, what will you do? Will you limit uh, the awards and things like that? To tell you the truth, I don't know. Um, you know, we do have funding available. We'll just have to see what the offers, uh, how the offers come in. And if, you know, if, if there is a possibility of purchasing more, um, we would take a look at that and we, we would uh, get that cleared before we, we could do that. But I, I did want to address that because we have gotten that question quite a bit. Um, we do plan to uh, release our solicitation tomorrow. Um, just so you know, um, it's well, we, I said lightning speed on Tuesday. People think government lightning speed. Well, that'll be a couple of weeks or at least, or maybe a few months or years. Uh, no, we're not. We're going to uh, release that solicitation uh, tomorrow if all goes well. Um, and if it doesn't, it's, it's my fault, not Hillary's. Um, but, uh, but the solicitation will go out and then we'll have a call with anyone who's really interested in bidding so that we can walk through the particulars of what we're expecting on that. Um, but then, you know, at the end, we will award contracts and then basically we're depending upon those relationships that have been built between the nonprofits and the schools and the, uh, and the contractors to uh, deliver the product uh, on, a, on a mutually agreeable schedule. Um, and then upon that delivery, uh, submit the paperwork to us electronically through our system uh, that the, the delivery was made, what was delivered and then we will pay the bill. We are asking in our uh, solicitation that, uh, that there be a 30 day pay uh, from, from when we pay our vendor to make sure that they're paying their suppliers uh, within 30 days. So we are trying to make sure that uh, payment gets to any subcontractors, any farmers, any uh, growers. Uh, we're trying to get that payment done as, as quickly as possible because we do realize that sometimes terms are like 120 days and, and so forth and, and we don't want it to go that long. Um, so, uh, so again, this is not our normal procurement program. There's a lot of questions that to tell you quite honestly, we may just not have the answer to today. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're looking for feedback. I think even after we put out the RFP, we'll be looking for feedback as we walk through exactly what's required. And, and you know, we, we're a pretty agile group. Um, I'm not, but, but most of our folks are much more agile than me. And uh, they, they can uh, make some shifts if we need to as we go along. But uh, I think that's enough uh, of, of me talking. Uh, I really would like to get to your questions and, uh, and see if we can provide some, some answers or, or at least uh, tell you we don't know and, and tell you we'll think about it. So uh, with that, I'll turn it over to Molly. Great, thank you, David. Um, a lot of great questions coming in, so we'll get right to them. Um, if you could talk a little bit, the question is, why isn't the program front-loaded since most of the impact is short-term? Um, so if you could just kind of provide some color on why it's going to be stretched out for now. Yeah, um, I, I think, you know, there, there's, uh, I know there's a, there's a lot of fresh produce out there. Um, I think when we looked across nonprofits and what we thought we could move, I think we thought that 100 million was, was about right. Um, you know, I will say 100 million in fresh produce, hopefully will go a lot further than 100 million in uh, dairy and, and meat products. Um, but, uh, but again, you know, I, I think, you know, there's flexibilities, you know, that we're going to build into the system. Um, you know, 100 million was what we put forward. If we get offers that exceed that, we'll, we will definitely explore and take a look at that. Great, thanks. Um, next question, will the solicitation provide weights um, and food box mix? 
specifications? That's a good question. Uh, the, the, we are not dictating the size of the box. We know some locations really like a 10 pound box or 20 pound box max. Other locations might be willing to take 30 pound boxes. So we're leaving that up largely to the, uh, to the contractor and the, the destination. Um, and, uh, and so, so that's, uh, that's that one. As far as what's in the box, we provided some, uh, some product groups that we'd like to target. Um, but ultimately, it really becomes uh, up to the, uh, the produce uh, vendor and, uh, and again, the, the recipient of those products to, to tell us what the, what the box is going to look like. Uh, I just will say one more time, and we'll say it probably 15 more times before this time is over, uh, domestic only. Uh, has to be 100% grown and, and if processed uh, in the United States so and its territories. Yeah, if I can just add to that, one of the things I think that the RFP does well and that will be new for you that have participated in our programs previously is when we get proposals and you'll have an opportunity to identify the size of the box, the contents of the box, and we can have a dialogue about that um, under the RFP setting. So if there are things that we have questions about or need more details on, um, we can definitely have further dialogue uh, under the style of acquisition. Great. Um, we've got several questions asking, um, does it have to be whole fresh fruits or vegetables or can it be value added kind of fresh cut items? Fresh cut items would be okay. Great. Um, another question on seasonality. So um, can we change the content of the boxes as the shipping, the season progresses? For an example, when broccoli is cut and ready in late July was the example given. I'll let Hillary answer that one from a contractual standpoint. Yeah, so we um, recognize at USDA that based on regions of the country and times of year, we may get different contents of the box. Uh, my best guidance from an acquisition perspective was that if you think that um, you may expand and put those into a box at a later time, that you identify that information um, in, the in your technical response. But yes, we recognize that different products will be available at different times. Great, thank you. And the question, how do you see grower and sh grower shippers being part of this process? Yeah, I, again, you know, we're, we're looking to contract with anyone who can take, you know, take produce, put it in a box and, and, and ship it to uh, and, and deliver it to a nonprofit or school um, and a mutually agreed schedule. So, so I think um, you know, if, if there's capabilities of doing that, and we are looking for multiple products in a box, um, you know, our typical programs, we're buying, you know, a 20 pound box of, uh, of potatoes that goes in or a 40 pound box. I, I think, uh, you know, we really are looking for multiple products in there. And, and that'll be part of the evaluation is, you know, looking at, you know, where can we get the most produce moving through um, and, uh, and, and, you know, also the, the locations where we can have that produce move through. Great. Um, is there any expectation um, from your perspective of how long between the time the nonprofit orders the produce and it's delivered? Again, that's a mutually agreeable schedule between the nonprofit and the, uh, you know, who we've contracted with, you know, our, our typical um, you know, procurements we're, we're buying and we're telling you to deliver to this location and you've got 15 days, you call mm -hmm. ahead and make an appointment. None of that applies here in this, in this program. Uh, this program really is, we're going to have a contract and then it's up to that, that contractor to deliver, you know, on a mutually agreeable schedule to the nonprofit or the school. Yeah, and you'll tell us in your RFP response what you're proposing as far as a delivery schedule, but again, um, we're leaving that up to you to manage your supply chain. So there's a specific question about Puerto Rico and kind of understanding how much money will go to certain regions. Um, if you can just provide any context on that. 
Yeah, we, we've gotten that question quite often too. Uh, you know, are we going to do a fair share or, or, or anything like that? I mean, I, what, what we're looking at is depending on the offers that we get, we're going to try to make sure we have coverage across the country. Um, I don't believe we'll have fair share that everybody will be getting exactly the equal amounts. However, you know, Puerto Rico, if there's a distributor there that, that can participate, obviously that's, you know, part of, part of our regional, you know, map, if you will. And that's one of the locations that we would like to service through this program. Great. Um, there's a question about um, DOD Fresh and making sure that it doesn't interfere with the serving schools. So maybe clarity that this is not supplanting the, the school meal programs that are happening by schools being allowable, if you want to add to that. Yeah, the, uh, the, the schools that have uh, the DOD Fresh program, um, you know, our intention is not to supplant anything that's occurring in those, uh, in those schools. You know, they still have uh, their entitlement. It's just like all of our other purchases. We are making all of our regular purchases on a regular basis. This is in addition to, um, not, not to supplant anything. If we supplant, then we've, uh, we've, we've not uh, fulfilled what we're trying to do here. Uh, lots of questions about specific commodities. Everything that I see is fresh fruits and vegetables. So maybe just clarity that it's what's allowable again. <laughs> yes, only fresh produce and we do include fresh cut produce in that. But, but that's, uh, that, that's all that this program is specifically to help the fresh produce industry. Great. Um, lots of kind of similar questions about will there be any kind of set aside in the evaluation for local um, or small businesses or farms and then also minority or fe uh, female owned businesses. Yeah, so there's not a conventional set aside like you may think of it from a small business um, set aside perspective like we do in our regular acquisitions. However, within the technical evaluation portion of the um, technical proposal, we've asked offers to address how they're specifically going to engage with small, local, and regional farms. Great. Um, this one is designed for individuals or families. Again, I think that it comes back to that relationship with uh, the distributor and uh, the the entity, you know, the nonprofit or the school. Um, you know, the size of the box kind of fits in with that as well. Okay, so lots of questions along that. So there's no minimum amount that goes in the boxes. No. Uh, lots of questions where to find the solicitation. So maybe could provide the the web address. <laughs> Yeah, I think, I think Dave said it best. Um, if you will Google um, on the Selling Foods AMS Commodity Procurement webpage, the food distribution box, it is, I verified today, it is the first thing that, that comes up. We'll post the solicitation there as well. There's also in the upper right-hand corner of our um, Commodity Procurement webpage, a way to sign up for our listserv. And one of the options you can check to, uh, to sign up for is the food distribution box. Um, piece here that we've addressed. Um, will you be choosing more than one entity in the same region? Yeah, so we talked about this a little bit on the webinar, but um, a, a good follow up question. It's our intent to um, um, not be restrictive in the number of participants that, that uh, participate. Uh, we'll be making multiple awards per region for contract line items. So, yes. Multiple awardees. Great. Just going through here. Um, oh, so this one, um, because there are multiple boxes, if there are distributors that can meet the needs of maybe just a dairy box or the combination box, should they be submitting one proposal or separate proposals for each of the different box types? The way that the RFP response is structured is that they would submit and identify the specific five, the CLIN to which they're offering. So those five CLIN areas, just for your reference, number one was fresh fruit and veg, number two was dairy, number three was pre-cooked meats, 
and number four was combination, and then number five, fluid milk. So an offer could conceivably offer a specific FMV box, which would be contract line item one, and may on the same proposal um, offer a item four combination box that contained some dairy, some FMV, some other products. So they should within only submit one proposal um, for each prime contractor that's offering and then submit multiple contract line items in their proposal. Great. Um, a question on the priority commodities that were listed um, on the previous web. Um, can you provide um, any additional information on how much of a priority that will be when you're considering the RFP? Yeah, that's probably, and Dave, I don't know if you want to speak to this one too, but that's an area where we've um, gotten a lot of feedback, um, specifically from um, industries that weren't maybe provided in, as an example from there. Right now, um, we've sort of moved away from a priority evaluation approach and listed some examples. Um, but want to be receptive again to all the commodities that, that could be offered. So, David, I don't know if you had anything to add about the priority concept. Yeah, I mean, you know, there, there's just certain products that, that we've heard from the industry that, that they really have a, a, a special need. And so, you know, those, those will be listed. But yeah, as, as Hillary said, you know, we, we'd like to support those. Um, they need to market to, uh, to distributors as well and, and try to move those through those pro this program. Uh, but we're not going to uh, dictate exactly what's in that box. Uh, there's a question if schools can be the lead on the proposal. I'm sorry, if schools could be the, the could, lead? Could submit the proposal? Hmm, that's what I'd have to look into. Um, I mean, I, I guess there's really no limitation or restriction at this point on proposals. Um, but I'd be interested to see how their supply, they, they're proposing that their supply chain works. So um, that's why maybe we could follow up on and, and get you some additional information. Great. Hey, Hillary, it's Robert. Um, huh? Restaurants too. I, I saw a couple of questions about restaurants wanting to be the lead, uh, kind of submit a, submit a proposal. Yeah, so again, there's no restriction on who can submit a proposal as long as sort of the general, um, spirit in which they're submitting is understand that they are responsible as the prime contractor, just as any prime contractor would be, to um, supply for the entirety of the supply chain, meaning that whoever submits needs to understand that the ultimate contractual responsibility is to get um, food in the hands of those that need food assistance. So um, they'd be responsible for the supply chain in its entirety. Can you provide any um details on what the requirements will be relative to food safety? Um, that one is one we've obviously had a lot of conversation of. Um, I, in the interest of probably not pushing out too much information to one specific group or one subset of groups in advance of the proposal being issued, um, that's one I'd, I'd kind of like to, unless Dave has general thoughts, kind of like to wait for the proposal to come out just to say specific requirements. Yeah, yeah, the only thing I would say is that, uh, you know, our normal purchases, we require USDA uh, audits uh, of the growers that will that will be used. Obviously, in a program like this, um, th there, there will be some some differences, quite a few differences there. Um, but I will say this, you know, from a USDA standpoint, we, we always reserve the right to uh, to do audits, and uh, and that will definitely be part of this as well, and have so that USDA has some oversight. Yeah, and the, and the RFP is constructed in a way which um, food safety remains a priority for USDA. Great. Hey, Dave and and Hillary, give Molly a little break. <laughs> 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 a lot of questions, as you know, uh, in the queue, but uh, I thought I'd help out a little bit and. and uh, a lot of questions on your recommendations, maybe on how to connect, you know, a lot of this was focused on food distributor, but how can you connect them with, or how can they connect with growers, shippers, growers, you know, kind of how that connection you see might work um, from your standpoint as you are evaluating the contracts, if you can share that. Is that a tough 
Yeah, it is It is a really tough question. I would say I think that um, we're counting on the growers and producers to, to market themselves, reach out to existing um, supply chain relationships that they have. I mean, the USDA also publicized a list of who's currently working with us and, and involved in our program. Um, so I think making connections that way, um, you know, we're, we're counting on your commercial supply chain um, to do its work. So I think bolstering those relationships and being as communicative as possible with your existing partners um, probably benefits you very well in a setting like this. Dave, go ahead. Hey, you got it. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> yeah, you know, I, that's kind of what I thought might be your answers. That's why I wanted to, but there are a lot of questions out there about this and people, who, again, who are excited, they want to be involved, they want to get participating. And, and so it's going to be a lot with the industry working with each other trying to work out those, you know, how the supply is going to flow and uh, to get to those folks who are going to be putting the boxes together. Great. Yeah, and, and Dave, Dave and I are here today because of the partnership that USDA has with, with United Fresh, and I think the partnerships that you probably have between the people you represent will, will become valuable as well. Okay, great. Uh, some more questions. Uh, do distributors need to have a PACA license? Uh, yeah, we will be checking PACA licenses. So, uh, so you know, anything that's required uh, for move the movement of fresh produce definitely will apply. What grades of produce will be required? For example, select cucumbers instead of U.S. number one. Uh, we we are again leaving that. Uh, uh, you know, far. we didn't want to dictate. Uh, so so I think we've got a line that you know we want. Obviously, we want uh, fresh produce. Uh, we obviously want good quality produce. Uh, obviously, the food safety, as Hillary said, is of paramount importance to us. Um, but we are not uh, dictating, you know, U.S. number ones or, or the grade. Um, a question about legumes. Will they be included? Uh, we were not including legumes. Is there a priority for sourcing box ingredients from the same region that they are awarded to serve? I think that's part of the proposal, you know, how they're supporting local and uh, regional, you know, uh, farmers and, uh, and, and growers. Yes. I mean, that's, that'll be part of the evaluation. Mm, a lot of repeats. Anything. I was talking and it was muted. Still, your hands Still weren't. That's right. <laughs> so um, how to, how to uh, connect the supply chain. Some questions are coming up. Do the people who submit bids have to, uh, will they be required to also submit to you what, what nonprofits they are working with? Is that something you're looking at? Yes, we do need to know who they're working with because um, again, we're trying to get coverage across the United States. So, so we are asking for, for them to identify who they're working with now you know, who they're working with might be a, a food bank that distributes in a 300 mile radius. We don't need to know every location within that 300 mile radius. We need to know the food bank that they're working with and they could could distribute to all of the, uh, you know, food pantries or, or whatever during through that uh, region. But we need to know the entity that they're working with so that we're, we're, we're making sure that we have that coverage as much as possible across the nation. Yeah, and one of the things I mentioned yesterday on the webinar, and I'll just highlight it here, is that part of the proposal should also address um, how an offer would potentially engage um, other entities and build their supply chain if necessary. So how to create, how they'll, how they plan to create new relationships. So we recognize that 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 is a component as well. Questions about the delivery region. So could you maybe just go through the, the seven regions quickly? Well, uh, I don't I don't have all the states listed for each one of the seven regions. Um, we are following um, a similar path that Food Nutrition uses for their regions. So um, I can read the regions names, but again, the specific states for those regions will be um, in RFP. They're Mid-Atlantic, Midwest, Mountain Plains, Northeast, Southeast, 
southwest and western. I know that doesn't give a, a lot of context to those, but. <laughs> and some more questions too about um, the region. So just clarifying that you don't have to bid on the entire region, you can bid on parts of regions, correct? Right, right. right. And you can bid on multiple regions even if, if you feel yes. in multiple regions, okay. Um, are you going to publicize who gets the contract so growers can um, have an opportunity to support the program? Yep, so part of the, the federal contracting process is notification publicly about who we make awards to. So post-award, that information will definitely be available. Sorry, lots of repeat here. <laughs> I think Molly ended up with the most difficult job. <laughs> Am I flushed yet? Um, um, maybe just talk about lots of questions about the deadline. So maybe just go over the timing again and the dates. Okay, so so our 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 goal, and then you can't hold us 100% because there's always you know things that that crop up. But our goal is tomorrow the solicitation will go out. We are prepared for that. Um, bids would be due one week after. We will have a call in in between to uh, to explain, um, and then award uh, a week after that is is our goal. Great, thank you. Um, some. Clarity was asked for in the PAGA license. Um, there are small entities that are currently exempt from PACA, um, two hundred thirty thousand or two thousand pounds per day. Um, does the exemption apply to this? Yes, so we're going to follow the the PACA rules. PACA is actually an, an organization within our same uh, agency, and we're following exactly whatever their their uh, rules and, and policies are. Oh, Robert, I think you're on mute. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, guys. Oh, gosh. So anyway, uh, I thought I had it on. I clicked it anyway. So I'm going back to the, um, uh, the region, the sub-region questions and discussion. So can, can an entity apply one time for multiple regions or they have to apply for separate uh, uh, contracts or separate Request for proposals uh, based on regions and, and subregions. So, if I understand your question, I, I think um, the intent is that an offer would put in a single proposal response, and within that, they would identify regions or portion of the regions um, to which they're offering by contract line items. So, if they were going to provide fresh fruit and veg, they could say, "This is our price for all of the regions," or these are the independent regions we want to we want to um, offer yeah. on. Okay. Yeah. Uh, is there a solicitation number available? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> Thought so. <laughs> um, so there's been a few questions saying if we are awarded, can we be funded for retroactive similar products that were distributed? Not according to fiscal law. <laughs> uh, what are the payment terms from the government to the awarded? I believe for fresh produce, we have to pay. Oh, geez, it's different for each product group. It seems like it's uh, like three days or something like that for fresh produce. So, so it'll be pretty, pretty immediate. Um, once we get an invoice. Um, are there, I think you answered this already, but is there a range of the award dollars per contract that you have in mind? No. No, depends on the offers. Offers will have the opportunity to let us know any capacity constraints that they have. So, um, well, we will be taking those into account when we're looking at awards. We want to exceed what somebody can do. 
Um, question, question about uh, vendor qualification. Um, that's part of the RFP for those who aren't already qualified vendors for, for, for uh, USDA. Yes. So the one of the proposal parts that I referenced yesterday on the webinar, I'm sorry, Tuesday on the webinar, um, was vendor capability is one um, part of the proposal. So they'll submit all of those, um, all that information. Um, and as Dave mentioned, it's somewhat expedited from our traditional um, traditional process. Okay. Um. Will there be any guidance on pricing to make sure we are in the proper range? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, we can't do that. <laughs> that best, best and final offer. Is that the right term, Hillary? Excellent. Yes. <laughs> Beyond boxes, is there any other packaging um, that you're looking at potentially? Or is it gotta be, um, is that kind of one of the, it's gotta be in a box? I think the intent was driven that it, it be in a box. Um, uh, the, that the term box is what's used in the RFP. Yep. Yeah. Um, how are Unless people? you're supplying fluid milk and then please don't put that in the box. <laughs> right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, how are payments made from USDA to the contracted vendor? Yeah, it's you know, all, everything's electronic. So, uh, you know, one of the things, once we award contracts, um, any awarded vendor will have to register in uh, SAM.gov. It's the system for award management. Um, and that uh, they have to put in banking information into that system. Uh, and then our system connects to that and, uh, and payments are, are made electronically. So the invoices will need to come in electronically and we will pay electronically. Did I get that right, Hillary? Yep. Um, this is a good question. If the food bank or other indicates that they want um, it outside of a box in more of a bulk fashion, is that allowable under this? If it's defined? Again, so right now, um, the way the RFP is structured, um, it, it does use the term box, but that may be one that uh, we need to chat about internally and make some clarification there. So I have a question. This is actually my question. Um, when you say multiple companies in a box, and uh, does that mean you could have, does, does that include different varieties of the same product. For instance, different types of citrus, different type of apples, different, you know, berries, you know, for instance. Have you thought through that much? I think because we're leaving it open, you know, it, we'll, we'll look at every offer that comes in. Okay. Okay. But just not one, yeah, I mean, commodity, same. Yeah, I, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I will say this too. I mean, you know, if, if the agreement is, you know, Hey, I, the, a, a food bank or, or another nonprofit wants 20 pound boxes of potatoes and that's really what they want that can be offered as long as it's a mutually agreeable. I know I said that on the call Tuesday, you know, our intent is multiple. Yeah. So a family can take them home. And, but, right. but if, if there's a, there may be a, a nonprofit that actually is serving food, um, you know, preparing and serving food, and they may want 20 pound boxes of potatoes and 20 pound boxes of, of something else. So uh, we would we would allow that. And there's some questions about whether it must be, can the distributor work with more than one nonprofit partner in the same proposal? Most definitely, yes. Um, is there any priority for organics? Uh, no priority for organics. And if you could just clarify um, on what you're covering, there's a specific question about um, if you're covering the cost of the packaging materials. Yes. 
Yes, we are covering everything from the, the produce itself all the way to delivery. So that includes the, you know, the place, you know, putting them in the boxes and, and the boxes themselves, any packaging. Okay. And if it's a fresh cut item, obviously the processing of that uh, fresh cut item. Great. Should be in their offer. Okay. Dave, Dave, what about the follow up on that question? What about reusable uh, boxes? versus cardboard people who don't who can get those returned back and use them again if they're designed for that if, if, if they can work that out with the uh, nonprofit that's perfectly fine okay we we have had situations in that we we, we purchase uh, fluid milk and the milk crates and uh, yeah you know, we always have that struggle getting those milk crates back and yeah. you know from these so it's got to be between that distributor and that that nonprofit location. How many vision orders to be placed by the nonprofit entities? Is there um, a preferred mechanism for that? Between the the contracted vendor and the uh, and the the nonprofit or school, we're we're not taking in orders at, at USDA. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> can you, hey, I got a question. Um, it, it's kind of there's one on here that reminded me of it. Can you walk through maybe it's, I guess Hillary the the you talked on Tuesday about the bids. Uh, by month, I don't know if that's the right words, you know, from now on to June, into June, July through, can you talk through that a little bit? So I think what you're referring to is um, the period of performance. And so how this contract will be structured is there'll be a base period of performance, which deliveries will occur May 15th through June 30th. And so then there will be option periods. So the, at the government's right, we'll exercise additional length of period of performance on the contract. So um, after that base period, um, you'll receive notice prior to exercise an option saying, hey, it's the government's intent that you continue to deliver for, and the base periods, there were three of them, um, July, August, September, October, November, December. So ultimately, deliveries could, could continue through December. Got it. Okay. Um, and this is just a reminder for participants. I see a lot of people are emailing me questions, but if you could just um, type them in the Q&A, it's a little bit easier to manage that way. Um, a question on the capacity restraints. So uh, is outlining those, does that negatively impact the application? Nope. nope. Uh, there's some questions about invoicing of the nonprofits, but the nonprofits aren't doing any in the invoicing in the way this model is set up, correct? Right. Are prices fixed across all bid periods? Can you modify pricing when a new bid period occurs? So post-award, we won't be doing um, pricing adjustments the way options um, traditionally work in the federal sector is that at the time of offer um, an, an offering entity would bid for the base period and subsequently give prices for um, option periods as well. Uh, can a nonprofit um, work with more than one distributor if there's multiple distributors awarded in the region? Yes, and, and we would anticipate, especially now that we've got the dairy and the meats included in this, that they would be working with multiple distributors. Molly, I saw an interesting question. Uh, are universities included in the scope of schools? I'll have to go check that. Um, <laughs> I, yeah. Our legal definition of uh, um, of that, I, I think it may. I think the schools are included under governmental agencies. I'm not sure universities will fit under that okay. definition, but that's okay. something we can check on. Okay. There's lots of questions about what states are in which region, so we can clarify that um, maybe in a follow-up email. Um, 
Well, that'll be in the uh, RFP tomorrow. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. How do you submit the invoice to USDA? So again, it's our intent that all follow-on documentation will be submitted through our web-based supply chain management system. So one of the things that um, an offer would submit at the time of proposal um, would be their um, web well, SDM registration form, and then um, contract administration activities would occur in web SDM, including um, invoicing. Which I mentioned on the webinar, um, CPP will, will provide training for that um, to successful offers. More questions about how um, you might find a balance between awarding between different size uh, companies. So again, um, I don't want to sort of get out too early and provide information that's not publicly available, but um, in, in the federal contracting structure, um, the contracting officer is required to say how things will be technically rated. Um, and in the RFP, so that information will be contained in the RFP. What is required for proof of delivery? Is it just a signature or are there other um, accounting measures? Yeah, again, there, there are a couple of components that we intend to accept as um, certified proof of delivery all contained within the terms and conditions that will come out tomorrow with the RFP. But a proof of delivery will be required, of in delivery um, will be required. Hey Molly, we got time probably for a couple questions. A couple okay. more questions. Great, thanks. Um, there's a question of if you are able to provide more than one box category, the fresh produce and dairy, um, does that give you a priority in consideration? <laughs> um, no, not necessarily. Did you see any, Robert, that I think we past? covered a lot of this, you know, kind of walking <laughs> going through these. I mean, we've got a lot of questions in the queue, but I think we tried to cover you know, some of the key ones that a lot of people were asking. Um, I know that we've missed some, and I will say that we will try our best to work with USDA to if things we didn't uh, get get to on the on the call that uh, we'll get we'll work with USDA to get those answers back. And I know, you know, a lot of you submitted questions uh, on Tuesday as well. I know USDA is working on those questions as, as well uh, to, to answer. Um, but um, I'm just going to close up. Uh, if it's okay with you guys and, and, and just, you know, thank you so much. You know, we, this has been great. I know we didn't have time for questions on Tuesday. So this has been a great opportunity for, for our members and, and the industry to, to, to kind of get more details. I think it's been very helpful. Um, I suspect your mailbox in the next <laughs> four to 40 hours will be flooded with proposals. So that might be a good thing. I, really, I think that's a good thing for our, from our point of view at, You've got a lot of interested people out there ready to help and want to help people in need, as I mentioned earlier. And our industry is 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 ready to get to work on this on this program. So, Dave and Hillary, we appreciate you being on. Tom, thank you for for helping us lead this this uh, webinar today. Um, Molly, thanks for sorting through all these questions. <laughs> So uh, uh, for that, uh, again, we want to thank everybody for being on the, on the uh, webinar today, and, and uh, we'll be back in touch with all of you soon. Uh, thank you very much for the recording of this uh, available as soon as possible. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you, everybody.